Hey guys, this is Andrew with HKN, and today uh, we're going to be talking about a topic that uh, a lot of people don't learn in their undergraduate studies, but is a very important uh, topic and uh, is used in so many things across all modern technology that it's kind of a shame that you don't. Uh, and that topic is Kalman filtering. So what is a Kalman filter? Well, it's an estimation algorithm uh, for linear systems. So linear systems being anything that can be described in state space form, in a transfer function form, basically where you're describing it with uh, linear differential equations. And what the Kalman filter does is given a linear system where you have a noisy process, so that means that your, your function that describes what's happening is a linear differential equation, but it's kind of noisy, it doesn't follow it exactly. And also the thing you're measuring uh, so say you have something moving around and you're going to measure position, you, they may not be exactly accurate, those are noisy as well. You're going to try to estimate the states of the system. So position, velocity, uh, voltage, whatever happens to be the states of your system. And this is useful for state feedback control, navigation and tracking, which is what I do, um, localization, adaptive signal processing, and about a thousand million other things. So. Uh, this is basically an overview of where you would come in with a Kalman filter. So this is a um, this is a feedback controller. This is just you have a set point R of t, your output y of t. You have some process noise being fed in here v of t. Your plant, your controller, and then a sensor that is trying to sense your output. Now the sensor for the output also has some noise on it because you don't know exactly the kind of function that's going on here. And so because you need to do something like the controller here in this instance would be something like a state feedback controller, not like something like a PID where it's kind of uh, independent of what the states are going on at that point. They don't deal with it directly. It's not independent, but it's not dealing with it directly. Uh, if you're dealing with something where you need the exact states, you would need to estimate what those states are because you can't get a direct measurement of it. And that's where a common filter would come in in your state estimator, which would then uh, feed an estimate of that state, which we're calling x hat. Usually hat means estimated uh, to your controller. So that's just kind of an idea of like where you would use something like this in like a control system. So here's a little bit of the setup. So we assume that the input and system matrices are known for all time steps. What that means is that we have a state evolution equation that follows this. The at time step k plus 1, you have a function of time that is going to multiply your current state, a function of time that's going to multiply your input, and a function that's going to multiply the noise. So there's kind of like a noise gain function. Um, and these functions are generally matrices. So uh, because your states are generally matrices, you can have a mat uh, you, uh, states are generally vectors, sorry. You can have a vector of inputs and a vector noise if you want. Um, so these are kind of flexible, and in general, anything I talk about here are going to be vectors and matrices. Uh, on top of how the state is going, we have a measurement equation, which basically says how do we get what we can observe. So we say that our measurement z at time k is equal to some measurement function times your state plus some noise. And this noise doesn't have any gain on it here. Uh, you can add that later, but it makes the functions a little more complicated. Um, so the, so in, very importantly, these noises that we're talking about, um, nu of k, or I, I think that's v specifically, v of k, and w of k here, um, have to be assumed to be Gaussian. So they have to have a normal distribution. And if you don't know what those are, we specifically have a video on it that you can go check out. Um, they have to be, here they're assumed to be zero mean. And their variances, their, vari uh, their covariance matrices are Q of K, R of K. They can change in time, but, they, but importantly, they have to be uh, white. So they have to have some kind of, uh, there has to be no relation across time between these two. If they're not white, then you don't get what's called a Markov process in these systems. Um, so the noise covariances are assumed known and can be time varying, and the sequences can be non-stationary, but most of the time we assume that they are stationary. Um, and if you don't know what I mean by stationary or white, um, reference a uh, stochastic processes uh, textbook. 
So the assumptions here are that our initial state is generally unknown and that this initial state should be modeled as a Gaussian random vector with a known mean and covariance. So basically you don't know where you're starting so you model it as being normally distributed about some point with some variance. Um, and those are generally user defined. Uh, you, gotta, you have to um, complete the linear Gaussian assumption of the filter with this uh, part here. So you can't have a set initial state, it should be a Gaussianly distributed random initial state. Um, and like I said before, with these assumptions, the state has a Markov property, and what the Markov property is, is it says that everything about the state at the current time can be known from the equations and the previous state. So you don't need, so if you're looking at time 300, all you need to know about in order to get the state at time 300 is the state at time 299. You don't need everything from one up to 298, you only need that one previous state. And that's important for this filter. Um, and also, because of that, it allows for this estimation algorithm to be what we call iterative which means that, at you, that you can do it in succession with receiving measurements. So here is the algorithm. The algorithm says that we start with a random guess of the initial state and an associated covariance for the estimate. So basically we have a guess at time zero, which is x hat at zero given time zero. And we have a covariance for this estimate at zero given time zero, uh, which is basically you take the covariance of the error. X tilde means error. It's, X tilde is defined as being the estimate minus the truth. So that is just a straight calculation. You would have to calculate this. Um, we then predict what the next time step state and covariance measurements should be. So the, this is called the prediction step. So what we do is we have measurements at a certain time. We haven't gotten the next measurement for the time we're trying to get uh, information about. So what we're going to do is we're going to predict the next step. So we predict that next step. So x, the estimate x hat at time k plus 1 given all of the information up to time k is literally you just take your previous estimate and propagate it with the equations. You don't know the noise so you leave that out. That v, gamma v of k that was over here we leave that out. But you just propagate it forward using the state, up, the state update equations. The variance of this estimate, p hat of k plus 1 given k, can then just be calculated by doing some, by um, uh, using the definition of covariance, and you end up with this formula here. It's f times p hat f transpose plus gamma times q gamma transpose. Um, it's very easy to prove that for yourself. Just use the definition of covariance. Um, the also what we do now is opposed to uh, only guessing what the next state is going to be, the x hat of k plus 1 given everything up to time k, is we're going to guess what our measurement should be if this is what we get. So all that is is we take our estimate for the state and use our measurement equation. Again we leave off the noise because we don't know what that's going to be, it's random. The deterministic part though we can use to predict what our measurement should be. So any time where these two arguments differ means that we're at the previous state predicting the next one. And then we have the covariance of this, of this estimate which is defined as s of k plus 1 um, and it's given using this equation here which is kind of familiar to the one to above it because you have the matrix multiplying times the covariance times the um, times the matrix multiplying transpose plus a covariance term here and here. So that's called the prediction step. So now what we do is we assume that at this point we get the next measurement. So we get the k plus 1 measurement. So this is called the update phase where we update our predictions based on our new information. The update is done by taking the prediction from the previous time and modifying it by adding the difference between the predicted measurement and the actual, actual measurement and multiplying by a filter gain. So what that means is we take what our guess for what this measurement should have been, what the actual measurement is and find the difference and then use that times some gain to alter our estimate for the state. 
So we call new here, this is not a V, this over here is a new, uh, as the difference between our estimates of the measurement. Now, once we have that difference in the estimates, we calculate the gain, which is called W of K plus one, as being the inverse of the covariance of our estimate times the covariance between the error in the estimate and the error in, of the state and the error in the estimate of the measurement. And in order to find that covariance, all it takes is you, again, just plug in definitions um, and the, uh, obviously Z, what Z is based on uh, noise and all of that. And you end up with this, this function for what the gain equation is going to be. So it's the covariance of your estimate for X times the measurement matrix at that time transpose times the inverse of the uh, measurement, error, uh, measurement error covariance. So once we have our gain and the difference in our estimates of our measurement, we multiply these together and add it to our previous estimate of the state. So here, x of k plus 1 given k, we have our previous estimate of the state. We have our gain and we have our error in our measurement. We take these two, multiply them together, and add it to our old predicted, measure, uh, predicted state, and we get the new updated state estimate. X hat of k plus one, given k plus one. And this is what we say is what we're guessing the state is at time k plus one. And then obviously we would have an associated covariance of this, um, of this estimate, which is given by this equation down here. Again, by just applying, um, the covariance formula to the uh, to this down here and actually all of these equations here although they seem complicated and they may seem a little bit arbitrary come from what's called the fundamental equations of, st of estimation and they follow directly from that given a linear dynamic system so maybe we'll do a video on that another time but right now you're gonna have to just take what I give you here as the equations so here's an overview of what the algorithm is doing. Basically what we have is we have prior knowledge of the state here as our estimate. So we have a, a previous estimate for a previous time and a covariance associated with that. We do a prediction step based on our physical model. We have a model that says how this state should evolve. If we have the previous time step, we should be able to get the next time step if there was no noise. And what we do is we use that to predict the next state given the previous state and have, we obviously have an associated covariance with that because it is random. Then what we do is we assume we get a measurement. The measurement proceeds into an update state. So what we do is we compare the prediction to the measurement and then create a gain to update our predictions. And what we, so what we do is we update those predictions and we get a measurement for the current, uh, an estimate for the state at the current time given the measurement at the current time, as opposed to the current time given the measurement at the previous time, um, and obviously an associated covariance, and then we just repeat this process over and over again for all k. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into an example. This is going to be another video, so um, I hope you guys learned something about this. Stay tuned for the next video, and uh, have a nice day, guys.